Welcome to a short lesson on rotational equilibrium. I'd like to start with a simple force problem. In this case right here, we've got an object hanging from a string, 8 newtons. We would draw a free body diagram for this if you were dealing with uh, traditional forces. This is stuff that you should have studied before, the weight vector pointing in this direction, tension acting in this direction. Now we could say some things about this situation. We could say these forces are balanced. For instance, if the object is not accelerating up or down. We could also say that the object's in equilibrium. It's another word that means basically the same thing. If we wanted to get more mathematical, we could write, start writing an equation, something like a summing of forces, where we took the direction of each of the forces and it applied either a positive or a negative sign, added them up, and we'd say that the sum of the forces were equal to zero. And we could be more specific. We could actually write an equation for this particular situation. Tension minus the weight is equal to zero. That's a situation that you should have already studied in uh, your regular physics class. Now we want to just do a, a new situation in which we, ca in we in case we use this setup to the right. Now what we do is, doing our traditional method, we would use a free body diagram. So we compress basically the entire object down to one point and then we would draw the forces on the free body diagram. In this case, you'd have tension acting up. You'd have the 6 Newton weight acting down, and also the 2 Newton weight acting down on the bar. And then looking at the free body diagram, you'd come to the conclusion that this situation to the right is balanced or in equilibrium. Now, here's the problem. Just looking at this situation, you would immediately know that this is in no sense of the word balanced. Because as soon as you release this, this uh, object to the right would start to rotate in this direction. In our traditional way of using the word balance, this thing is not going to be balanced. So our question is, what, was, what went wrong with our analysis? The answer is this. is So far in physics, we've been looking at basically linear equilibrium. In other words, drawing forces uh, and taking care of uh, up and down, left and right as associated with forces. What we haven't accounted for yet is rotational equilibrium. And this is going to require a, uh, an additional analysis uh, as we look at more complicated problems. Now there's a lot of similarities between the two analyses, and we'll just go ahead and get started with this. We could still t call an object uh, balanced in the rotation, and that's a little more like the traditional, like an actual balance, you know what I'm saying? It's not rotating to the right or not rotating to the left. We could also so say a situation is in equilibri rotational equilibrium. And what that would mean is we would have to be summing something such that it equals zero. But as we showed up above, we can't be just summing forces. We already did that for the object shown on the right, and the sum of the forces in that case are still equal to zero, but it's not in rotational equilibrium. Now, what's that other thing that we need to sum? Well, as you can probably guess from your previous study, what we're going to be summing there is a quantity associated with the rotation of the object, and that's going to be torques. So for an object to be in rotational equilibrium, the sum of the torques... In other words, plus or minus one torque, plus or minus another torque, add them all up together associated with a sign, and set them equal to zero. And the sum of the torques should be equal to zero. That's where we're going to go with this analysis, new analysis of rotational equilibrium. Now, you remember from your study, the definition of torque is a force applied a certain radius away from a reference point times the sign of an angle, and that's the angle between the force and the radius. In the example today, I'm going to simplify everything, and all the, the angles are going to be 90 degrees, so that term will go away. But uh, if you do have something at an angle, fr sine theta. Now, to, uh, that's how we get the values for each of the torques that we would like to sum, but we also need to get the sine for each of the, in other words, the plus or minus sine associated with each torque. And the way do you do that is this. It's, we do it by definition. We say that a positive torque is a torque that tends to turn the object in this direction. It's the counterclockwise direction. That is just a definition. The thing you have to be careful here is notice that this turning 
counterclockwise or kerning clockwise has nothing to do with whether the force arrows are pointing up or down. In other words, we can't use the plus or minus forces that we used in linear equilibrium. In this case, we disregard the, for the sign of the forces and just ask ourselves the question whether a particular torque would turn the object counterclockwise or clockwise. We'll see how that works here with an exa example. We'd like to do a free body diagram for the situation on the above right. We're going to call this an extended free body diagram now. Because in this case right here, we care about forces still, but we care about the location of where those forces are placed on the object. So in this case, I've drawn a reference line. It's just basically a line showing like, kind of like that bar on the upper object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my forces now on the object, just like I did on the free body diagram above, except I'm going to take care to place the forces where they're actually acting on the object, something like this. And that's the start of our extended free body diagram. The next step is to choose a reference point. In this case, I'm just going to choose a reference point that's located at this, uh, where the tension, where the string attaches. But it turns out, and this is an extremely important point, you can choose any place for your reference point. So it doesn't have to be a location of a force. It definitely does not have to be a location that the object is rotating about. In this case, I've chosen it here, but your reference point can be placed anywhere that it's convenient. Then once you have your reference point uh, located, what you're going to do is you're going to indicate the uh, measurements of your forces away from that reference point. So in this case, for instance, we have this R2 would be the distance that weight 2 acts away from a reference point. And then we might have this here, a little radius to the 6 Newton force. Now with a free body diagram done, we can, like we did in the example up above, write a specific equation for this specific problem. And it would look a little something like this. We're going to sum torques. So we need to calculate each of the torques associated with each of the forces on the object. We'll start with the weight 2, the 2 Newton weight. And we see the 2 Newton weight is R2 away from my reference point. And that's my force times my radius or my torque. Now I have to assign a sign plus or minus to this torque. Notice that if left to itself, this torque would tend to turn the object counterclockwise around my reference point that I chose. So therefore, based on our definition, counterclockwise, positive. Now we have our first torque in our equation. Going to the next force, the next force is the tension. The tension acts zero distance away from my reference point because I chose the reference point at the location where the tension attaches. So notice that our term is going to be zero. Now this is an important thing about choosing the location for your reference point. Notice that it has this simplifying effect of taking out that term because by definition, since I've chosen that as my reference point, it's zero distance away, that term will go away. Often it's convenient to place that, that um, reference point over a force that you don't know, or one of the forces that you don't know, and it tends to simplify your equations. Continuing with the equation, we've got one more force to go. We've got our 6 Newton weight. It's a distance R6 away from our reference point. And notice in this case, if left to itself, this torque would tend to turn our object clockwise around our rotation point. And there's our, uh, that gives us a sign of minus. We set those equal to zero. And now what we've done is just like we generated a equation of forces associated with our balanced or linear equilibrium situation. In this case, if the object was in equilibrium, the sum of the torques would be equal to zero. Now the way these problems work is you can draw traditional free body diagrams and come up with one equation, in other words, a linear equation for the equilibrium. And you can do the sum of the torques and create a second equation. And normally between these two equations, you'll be able to have enough information to solve more complicated problems in physics. Thanks for joining me.